Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our MPESA number 0722 712 -918. Why was the early church very powerful? The most persecuted, yet the most effective. What the 11 did, minus one devil called Judas, is affecting billions even 2,000 plus years later. Is it that they were made of different material? No. It is because they set new boundaries for their time, and that is why they are enjoy we are enjoying the fruit of their labor. And as I begin that, I want to, to mention two things. Number one, things that are very important for us to set new boundaries is that we have to be single-minded. Somebody say single-minded. I want to teach today. Somebody say single-minded. And to be single-minded, it means to be direct in your thinking, direct in your speech, direct in your approach to life. James chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says that a double-minded man let them never imagine. He is a double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Verse 9. It says, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Could you give me from verse uh, uh, 7? From verse 7. For let no man that suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. It means that when you're not single-minded, you are double-minded. What is to be double-minded? Wavering between two opinions. That is what Elijah told them. That you have to have an opinion. You are either serving Baal or you are serving God. But the people did not have an opinion. No wonder God will not listen to them. For us to come to a place where we are enjoying the inevitable change, we need to be single-minded. Somebody say single-minded. Yeah, and the Bible also records concerning being single-minded in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. Can you give me Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37? Matthew, 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 not Malachi. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37. Glory be to God. It says, Glory be to God. Can we read together? The Bible says that actually, let me just uh, read it from my Bible. It talks about that you cannot serve two masters. And let your yes be yes. But let your yes be yes. Let's read the word of God today. Okay, repeat that. Maybe, perhaps, probably. Those are not divine answers. Huh? For whatever more than this is from there. So any power telling you probably you will get your car. That is the evil one speaking. Hopefully, Maybe, prefallibly, maybe, paradventure. As much as you're praying with English words, the only answer the Bible expects from us is yes. Uh -uh. But let your yes be yes. Somebody here, you've been asked a question. You, are, you don't have an opinion because you are trying to play safe. You know that you are wasting a brother's time. He asked you to marry him. But you are still chewing his coffee. Java at cafe, every other hotel you have gone. You have even taken him to his village. But when he asks the question, you never want to be committed. You are wicked. You are a friend of the devil. <laughs> because what is more than that is from there. Well, perhaps, maybe still checking. checking. Taking for two years. You are just a bear. May God remember you. Hallelujah in the house. Am I speaking the truth in this house? Somebody say, from this day, my yes shall be yes, and my no shall be no. So you need to be single-minded in your approach. Single-minded. I'm taking the job, I'm not taking. I'm coming, I'm not coming. After all, even if you say no, where will they take you? Huh? But the enemy has made us liars without knowing. Because you don't want to hurt people. But I've realized you hurt people more when you are cooperating with the evil one. Any answer that is not straightforward is demonic. It is not me who has said Matthew 5, 37. 
And that's why Elijah is asking them, why are you faltering between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. Na kujaga kanisa, lakini unasema, miji bando sijasema Yesu ni buwana, but dami ya mungu ni mdami ya roo ni meokoka, you are a liar. That you are yes, be yes, and you are no, be no. If you are born again, you are born again. If you are not, say, I am not born again. And God will be our helper. <laughs> Isaiah 29, 13 says, that these people honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far away from you. I found myself in a situation like that. Where you, you, you are offering lip service, but your heart is not there. Have you found yourself there? Where you are praying, but your heart is in Kenogi. Have you been there? Where you are telling somebody, oh, I love you, sweetheart. But the way you are thinking about them, if heaven was to show you in a mirror, that person would cry for their life. Uh -uh. True or false? Tell them, let your yes be yes and no be no. Huh? If your neighbor is looking like they, they want to close their eyes and start seeing visions, tell them, ha! Really? There are some people that you need to steward there. Ha! Let your yes be yes and your no be no! Because that is what the word of God. Therefore the Lord, in as much as these people draw near me with their mouths, shouting in church does not mean you're close to God. I've been in meetings where they say, preach, preach! And that person is a chief fornicator in that church. It is possible. Uh -uh. It is possible to be the loudest in the family, but you're the one who causes chaos. Being loud does not necessarily mean you are sanctified. And as much as these people draw near with their mouth, people who smear you with oil, oh my God, reverend, let everybody live in this church. I'll be the only person left standing. Watch our chiria kazi ya mungu. Mimi na reverend. Wherever you go, they use the root scripture. Are you Naomi? <laughs> See, wherever you go, wherever you go, your people shall be. <laughs> and that is what they did to Jesus. If you read John 6, 66, they say, it says that, and many disciples departed from Jesus. Because there are many that followed him. But their yes was not yes. It was in between. We need to come out of in between. Decide. You are in a church not by force, by choice. Huh? You are in that marriage by choice. That's why the Bible says because of hardness of heart, there is an exit plan, divorce. And although it's not the perfect plan of God. But don't be the kind of wife that is always threatening with going. Where are you going? You are demonic. Every saint quarrel, I'm leaving. I'm going back to my mother's. Now, see, you just go. I'm here, Jirani. My issue is the in Mekata. Ah, I can't hear you. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm going to go to the house. I am going, I'm going, I'm going. You've been saying that it's 10 years and you're still there. What do you think the people you are living with feel? Huh? And yet you are never taking one step. In fact, the more you say you're going, the more you're adding clothes in that house. Why are you confusing people? Should I talk the truth? Yes, let your yes be yes. Telling everybody, me, this April, I am not going to be in VAC. The way now what this reverend is preaching, I am not going. But even 2025, you are still here. But you are still telling me, I'm not going to be in VAC. I'm not going to be in VAC. I'm not going to be in VAC. You are a liar. Let your yes be yes. And you are not being no. I can't hear your amen. amen. Somebody say, from this day, from this I, repent I repent for being a double-minded person. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 113. Psalm 119 and verse 113. The Bible records very well. Actually, David was saying that I hate people that are double-minded. Psalm 119 and verse 13. says that I, I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. It means the minute you become double-minded, the law of God is not in your heart. Because when God says sin is sin, he does not stay in between. True or false? When he says do not lie, he does not suggest you can. Do not lie. Do not lie unless. If. Maybe unless cornered and caught and your life is at stake, you can lie. Does the Bible give you those options? Does the Bible tell you pay your child, but in case your child falls sick, I will force for a golden man that we can meet next month. Does the Bible say that? 
Because the Bible is forthright. Yes? He says, no, if you suck me, you will live your life in abundance. The number of your days will multiply. Nothing shall be scattered. But if you decide not to serve me, you will serve your enemies. That's how God speaks. He tells you what it is and what it is not. But the problem we have in most of us, which is now what fuels double-mindedness. It is called the spirit of compromise. Every time double-mindedness is present in the life of a person, it is because they have embraced the spirit of compromise. Because now I'm dealing with characteristics of a double-minded person. Number one is compromise. Compromise is knowing what you, exp you are expected to do, but you choose to soften the rules. You choose to soften the conditions so that you may appear good before men. There is no time you make a compromise, except the compromise we talk about in marriage, when you are doing marital counseling. Where you compromise because somebody leaves this, you, you, you leave your family, you leave your this, and we come together. I'm talking about the negative compromise. Where you know what you're doing is wrong, but you say God will understand. What will happen, like Samson, when you confide with Delilah and, and nobody will understand? Because anytime you're engaging in double-mindedness, God is not with you. His presence is not with you. Number two, worldliness. Where you want to be in every Mogidi and in every Kehosho, the devil is a liar. Where I, I realize that even our people are singing Fidirida in church, the devil is a liar. I saw a wedding in a church last weekend, and they were singing Fidirida, and the pastor is standing on the altar. Fire would fall. Ha! Shapataya! Are you? So, in case you are thinking of doing a wedding, because today I'm introducing two weddings today. If I hear Fidirida here, that will be the end of the service. They Now, what are we there saying? It was his season, and it's okay. It's a song of life. And we all celebrate that God can remember. But there is what is for the altar, and there is what is for the public. Don't bring what is for the public into the sacred place. Hmm? So, now that. Wildliness. Wildliness. Where you, you want to belong, you know. You, you, there is a way, you know, when you are born again, there is a way you come to the house of God. True or false? But we have a generation that wants to change even the rules. When coming to the house of God, they say God does not look on the outside, he looks at the heart. If he does not look on the outside, why did he give the dressing code for priests? And do you know how many layers they were supposed to wear to hit that transparency? Three layers. Me, I'm very lightweight. I was supposed to wear this one, put another one inside, put another this one, and it's supposed to cover everywhere. Because God hates nakedness. That is where the first thing when Adam sinned, he became naked. Huh? Tell him, but God hates nakedness. God hates it. Mm, be naked alone. You are free in your house. Walk naked. Finish the syllabus of nakedness. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why when the young kids, like when they are two, three years old in the house, it's a cat and mouse game when you are trying to, wait to, put them clo to put clothes on them. Do you know that? Like those of you who lace kids, you know. Kakifika two years. Ukitoa tu goyo. That is when their marathon nature begins. <laughs> and then, they, I don't know, there is fun about nakedness when they are two years. We have many adults who are 30 years old, but are behaving like two years old. Naked, but very happy. Sisi si ni maneno wa kanisa hiyonge agi. Mi nitaongea ukweli. It is not to kovafara, to navaga higi kwa kanisa. We know the protocol. We know the protocol. When we come to the altar, we are not selling us. It is him. And we come to his house the way he wants. I have noted that people go for birthdays dressed to kill. In quotes. But when they come to the house of God, t-shirt and a jean. God will understand. That person is already prepared to do sports. So what akikuja, akiona hiyo sport haimbagi. Ah. I do this full time. 
That's why the ten virgins, everybody carried their own oil. Tell your neighbor, carry your oil to the service. Don't borrow me oil. Don't, me, I carried my own. Don't borrow me mine. It's true. The ten virgins, all of them were supposed to carry. But the foolish ones carried it through. That could not last them the whole night. <laughs> I thank Jesus. He's the one who gave that proverb. It's not me. Say the foolish ones. So because another characteristic of double-mindedness is foolish decision. Foolish decisions. Because before you make a decision, weigh your decision. Say it compromise. Say it wilderness. Number two, three, foolish decisions. When you find somebody after they decided to relocate to Kapengulia, they say, ooh, ooh, what did I do? But it is because when you are double-minded, even when you are given counsel, you will still do what you want. There are people I've learned in life, even if they ask me my opinion, I will tell them I don't have any. Because the last one I gave, they never followed. <laughs> have, do you have friends like that? They tell you, I'm a And especially wives, we are like that. Men who are here understand us. Like I would go to my own and tell him, I have this dress and I want this one. So he tells me, I like this one. But in my heart, I knew I wanted this one. So he has learned the art. He tells me, we are the one you want. Because previously he has tried to tell me, and eventually I will wear that one when he's there. When I'm coming back, he realizes the one I wanted is the one I want. Said, what was the purpose of asking me? Am I, am I resonating with wives here? Sinikweli. Kuna mtu anakuliza, nifanya hivi, nifanya. But in their heart, they know what they want. And you try to argue with them and tell them that decision is foolish. But because the Bible says that where there is many counselors, there will always be wisdom. And people never miss their parts. So I pray that your ears shall be open for wisdom. Lift up your hands and say, Oh God, baptize me with the spirit of wisdom. I refuse to be a victim of silly mistakes and foolish decisions in Jesus' name. Out of anger, many people have resigned from their job. <laughs> and it was only a trial. And then you tamak for two years, saying, God of Elijah, set up fire. Every demonic power that pursuing me, in the curse that my former boss gave me, it is not a curse. You brought it on yourself. Huh? Any former, you know, curse, eh? Unanza kutafuta waliniekea. Hirisi kwa uji. Walikuwa naeka uzi na kamba kwa kitiangu. But it is because you made a foolish decision. Uh -uh. Am I speaking the truth? It is not everything we see is witchcraft. And I told people in the first service that you can walk out of many relationships and God can deliver you from household wickedness. But the wickedness you covenant with, you live with it. If you choose the wrong spouse, congratulate yourself. Huh? Because even when people try to tell you, ha! Anybody who will come between me and Omondi, the devil is a liar. Am I speaking the truth? Have you ever tried to cancel somebody in love? Do they hear? They gang up together and you become their common enemy. When I was a younger pastor, I tried that. It fired on me. But now I knew I would be direct and I tell them both. I don't tell one. One time I was tempted to tell one. I called my daughter. I told her, ah, hey, mungu, I was telling them out of spiritual. It, it never worked. But I lost her. Because she said, Reverend, Reverend you cannot bless what is cursed. What must never be, even if you lay a blessing on it, it can't work. Because people are able to see what you cannot see. I pray that in the day when God will release help and send help from people around you, you will not be too foolish to reject it. I can't hear your amen. amen. That is why before you make a major decision of your life, have people that you can trust. Have people that you can talk to and listen to godly counsel. Before you commit your heart, commit your mind first. Do thorough investigation. Because some decisions like marriage, career, and all that, they require due diligence. Can I get a better amen? amen. Characteristic of a double-minded man, easily distracted. A double-minded person is easily distracted. Easily distracted. Uh, it is what pursues people that are impasse buyers. And hawkers drive on such people. Hello, in the I was I used to use sell products, but I was not a hawker, but I was almost one. Well, because I had some, some <laughs> I had some ladies that would go, 
Have you ever seen even when you had no plan to buy a cloth? And then on the streets you are passing. Say my hey, hey, see there's a kefao. Hey! A hundred bob, this one. I and then later when you keep it in the house, you realize you wasted your money. Okay, in the balcony, am I speaking to real people? But anytime you purpose, I'm going to shop for clothes. Or I'm going to shop for food. And you go to the market, you always get the best. Because you are not under pressure. Easily distracted. But when you have a clear budget of your money, even if anybody came with a plan, you will tell them, I don't have any money because what I have is already planned for. If giving your tithe is already planned for, when somebody comes and your tithe is there, you will not tell them, because to you it's not available. If you are engaged to a person and another person comes, you cannot give in. Even you cannot go for coffee. Why? Because your heart is not. But we have criminals in the house of God. People who are dating for brothers. <laughs> huh? Am I speaking the truth? And brothers who are dating for, not of course in VAC. Those who are watching online, burn us if you will. <laughs> Yawekesa, Yamati, Ya Jonathan. Zote pamoja. You will bust. Are you fulfilling prophecy? <laughs> the time will come when seven women will cling to one man. You are not a fulfiller of prophecy. Easily distracted. They are looking for things to offend them. It's really distracted. I've realized when you are a double-minded person, unatafta kitu ya kukukasirisha. When you really love, love, love something, you, love is stronger than death. That's what the Bible says. When you really love somebody, even on the, even if they have offended you, you will still stand by them. But when you are double-minded, you will be looking for an offense because you are easily distracted because you are double-minded. I pray that you will not be easily distracted. Never be in a church by force. Be there because you want to be there. How many are here because you want to be here? How many are serving God because you want to serve God? Amen. Because when you're easily distracted, you are looking for things to offend you. And Jesus said that blessed are those that are not offended in me. There are many that followed Jesus, but they were offended in him. But Peter said that where can we go from you? And you are yet you are the life. And the resurrection, you are the life, the way, and the truth. We cannot run away. That tells you is a man who is decided. Ruth is a woman that was decided, very decisive. She said, that where you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Opa was different. And I believe she was offended. She actually maybe started asking, Who you mama? Mme amekufa? Watoto amekufa? Akona kisirani. Who you mama? Ni muwaga. So she said, but Ruth knew. She knew better because in her heart, she was not easily distracted. She knew her God works. Her vision is my vision. And when you're like that, I can assure you, your inevitable change must come. Can I get a better amen? amen. The other characteristic is inconsistency. Inconsistencies. When you're double-minded, you realize you're very inconsistent in the way you do things. These are the people who do five projects at a go. Have you ever gone to a shop, you wonder what that person is selling? General merchants. <laughs> if it's in the village, I understand. Because when you're in the village, you want to meet the need of the villagers because you're the only shopkeeper. But if you're in a place like, for instance, look at Nairobi. You go to Taveta, they sell clothes. True or false? Sasa wewe uwenda na chakura ya kuku hapo. Like you come to Duruma, there are electricals. Hardware things. You go to Nyamakema, you buy greens. True or false? Situnaoke ukweli. Uende kutafuta basi, uende mashako ama ukuje hii saiti. Sasa wa ukienda Kenyatta Avenue, uende ukatafute basi ya Mombasa. See, something is very wrong. Inconsistencies. Yani mutu wanafanya vitu wazieleweki. Mr. Sam, Mr. Steve, nime kuhubiria. Sijo kweli. It is 
Unajua ina stridi huko ndio tunatoa gas, steel, ati utafute mama kiza. Ninataka kitege. Inconsistencies. Amen. If, you know, when, when you understand that God wants to bring change, you establish patterns that you can live by. We are, you are traceable in your steps. They know even if they were to find look for you in a club, they can't find you. Huh? You have already drawn the lines. If they were to find you in a, if they were to accuse people of gossip, people around you would defend you. Because they know you are consistent in your character. You are consistent in your speech. You are consistent in the way you do things. But some of us, ata watu wakitaka kukutetea, you are a suspect in everything. Because you are what we call in Kikuyu, Goruoho. You are everywhere. Not every empty seat is yours. I'm not hearing a man from this side, but I'm loving this side. Not every empty seat is yours. I think it's because this side they decided to wear black. They are very hot. But they said, I'm liking the whiteness, the whiteness. Next time, ushers, I advise, please, when you see too much black on one side, mix it. <laughs> That's why today I wore black and white. But I have, do I have more white? I think so. I think I'm more this side. Tell you, but you should be consistent in the way you do things. If you are only 25 and you have already been employed by 10 employers, something is wrong somewhere. Not with the employers, but with you. Kama umefika tati, na tayari you are talking of, you are proud of 15 breakups. Somebody say consistency. I remember days when I prayed for God to give me consistency. I took a fasting of 21 days. What you see, people saying I'm consistent. It didn't just happen. Because how do you overcome double-mindedness? Number one, by setting new boundaries in prayer. Setting new boundaries in prayer. I remember I went to one of my, the pastors, one of my mentors, Prophetess Gloria, she's been here before. And I went and asked her, because she would wake up every morning from 8 to 5. She would be in the church praying the whole day. So I checked her life. Then she told me one day, let's go to church. I knew what she was up to. So, and I knew there is no way I can pray from 8 to 5. So, the first thing I did, I called her aside. Tell me, how do you manage to pray from 8 to 5? She sat me down. She told me, number one, you have to be disciplined. And you have to make up your mind. Inconsistency is always, is always overruled when you make a wise decision. Then she told me, number two thing you need. Fill your heart with the word of God. Because when you cannot pray and you don't have that burden of the Lord, you can declare scriptures. And then she told me, combine it with worship. Every time you worship God and you reach in the realm of the spirit, you get the burden of the Lord that even does not concern you. You can be here but praying for Asia. Hello? You can be here and be praying for 2030 for things you do not know. And I learned that. And I looked at her and I realized it was not as easy as she was doing. So I went to God in prayer and I, I went on a fasting I didn't tell her. I said, God, I want to be consistent. Because I notice I start this, I stop. I start this, I stop. I am not consistent in the way I do things. Lord, change. And through prayer, I can tell you for a fact, I don't struggle with that anymore. I recommend you highly to pray. May God give you the grace to pray. Sio kuamukaga na kuanguka. Kuinuka na... You are unpredictable in the way you do things. There is no consistency. You also need to set new boundaries in your speech. There are things that should never come out of your mouth. Consistency is your speech. Your yes be yes and your no be? No. The people, they cannot, if they hear a gossip, they can say, ah, ah, who you see, oh, yeah. that person does not gossip. And that's why I chose when I became a pastor. If any two people come sharing gossip, I call both of them. And I do not filter what they say. I tell you as you say it. And for that reason, I have realized with time, gossip has reduced. And still, there are still small pockets, but they are, the bigger pockets are gone. So I'm making an announcement. In case you want to gossip somebody, know that I will call them. It's true. It is the only way to kill it. Because any rebuke given in love does more than gossiping people. Stand up on your feet in Jesus' name. I want you to pray to God. And Lord, I pray. Okay, sit down. Why are you standing or what are we doing? Okay, fold your notebooks. Pastor Moya, sit down. Thank you. Okay, fold your notebooks, children of God. 
Can we stand up in the presence? <laughs> Thank you. You can sit again. Just sit again. Take your time. The Bible says after sitting, you stand in there for. Some of you have had a very rough weekend. Like our junior youth were jogging in Gong Hills yesterday. So most of them are not able to wake up early. But I believe you have the joy of the Lord. Stand up on your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. <laughs> Lift your hands and tell God, deliver me from double-mindedness. I must set new boundaries in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from double-mindedness. What are you desiring to become? Who are you desiring to be? It cannot happen until you make up your mind. Deal with compromise. Deal with worldliness. Easily distracted. Inconsistency. Making foolish and hasty decisions. The second you pray, prayer, you pray, Lord, settle me, settle me. Emotionally and spiritually, Jehovah, settle me. Emotionally and spiritually, Lord, settle me. Settle me, Lord. Let me not be a double-minded person. In my thinking, let me not be a double-minded person. In my emotions, let me not be double-minded. Lift your hands up and cry to him. Rabba, if you say that a double-minded man will never receive anything from the Lord, it means that there are many people that are praying and have never received an answer. Because even when they were praying, their mind was scattered everywhere. If it is God, we will serve him. If it is ourselves, we will serve ourselves. Ah, but, but, but no in between. Father, I thank you for the person that is watching me online. You're there, you're not born again. You've been postponing the day of your salvation. I want to recommend you highly to Jesus. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sins and write my name in the book of life. From this day, I'm born again. If you've prayed that prayer, you're born again. Write to us on 0722-712-918. God bless you. Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like, and follow me. And to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, Divine Encounter, and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.